Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So for today, our discussion will be more on police operations. So last meeting, we have discussed the basic and the first type of operation. Police operation, I mean, patrol operations, okay? Because the PNP, ladies and gentlemen, has two main objectives in relation to the to the PNP vision and the PNP mission. So, what are, by the way, the two main objectives of the Philippine National Police? First on the list, ladies and gentlemen, is the crime prevention. So, most 85% of the total strength of the Philippine National Police shall be deployed in the field for crime prevention. So, how can we prevent crime? Through patrol operation. That's why patrol, ladies and gentlemen, is known to be the backbone of police organization. However, ladies and gentlemen, we have also some cases wherein we have deployed patrollers but still there are unprevented crimes. So what should the PNP do in terms of unprevented crimes? So that's now the second objective of the Philippine National Police. Secondary to crime prevention comes now crime solution. So if there are cases that were not prevented, at least the PNP should be able to solve the case. Okay? So we should be able to solve the case. Now, how do we solve the case? We should do investigation. So we should do investigation to identify the perpetrator and to file the appropriate charges against him or them, wait for the issuance of the warrant of arrest once the judge has determined probable cause through the conduct of his preliminary examination. Okay. Now, how does it work? How does it work? So, the PNP will do its investigation and once he, the PNP had identified the suspect or suspects with the with all the available evidence or pieces of evidence, it will be attached in the case folder. It will be endorsed by the investigator to the prosecutor. And the public prosecutor will conduct preliminary investigation. So what's the purpose of the preliminary investigation being conducted by the prosecutor? Its purpose is to determine probable cause. Probable cause in relation to what? Probable cause that a crime had been committed. So there's a crime committed. And probable cause showing that the suspect or the respondent is probably the person who had committed the offense. So if there exists probable cause, the prosecutor now will then, will then file the case with the courts. Okay? And the judge on that specific court will do his preliminary examination okay so there's a difference between preliminary investigation and preliminary examination uh, preliminary investigation is being conducted by the public prosecutor while pre preliminary examination is being conducted by the judge however they have the same purpose so their purpose is to determine probable cause so the judge now conducts preliminary examination and if the judge determines probable cause, then he will issue a court docket number to the case. And likewise, he will issue a warrant of arrest against the accused. Okay, So he will issue a warrant of arrest against the accused, directing the PNP to apprehend that wanted person in bring that wanted person to the court in order that that wanted person will be bound to answer for his crime so that's 
that's now uh, that that's now crime solution. Uh, we also have here the term in addition to crime solution. We are we have here the terms crime cleared and crime solved. Crime crime clearance and crime solution. What's the difference between the two? When we say crime clearance or crime cleared, it refers to the, the cases of which the perpetrators were identified. And once the perpetrators were identified, we know that we can move on to the next step, the filing of the case. So yun po yung ating tinatawag na crime cleared. We call a crime cleared yan, if the case, if in the case, the perpetrators or perpetrator were identified. But if the perpetrator were apprehended, yan, perpetrator were identified and perpetrator uh, identified and apprehended or arrested, we now call it crime solved. Okay. So, if the perpetrator is identified, we call it a crime cleared. If the perpetrator was apprehended, we call it a crime solved. Now, question. How about, sir, those perpetrators who are arrested in the act of committing a crime or caught in flagrante delicto? That's already considered as crime solved. Okay? Crime solved. Why? Because the perpetrators were identified and at the same time they were apprehended. So, where do we see crime cleared cases? Just like the first example I mentioned a while back, we were not able to uh, up, uh, apprehend the perpetrator at the crime scene. Thus, the investigator conducted an investigation and the investigation led to the identification of the suspect. So, with the proper evidence, the investigator filed uh, or endorsed the case to the public prosecutor okay, because uh, they were already or the suspect were already identified the, fi the move for the filing of the case. So, from that instance, from the instance that the suspects were identified, we can already call that case a crime cleared. Why? Because we can now proceed to the next stage. The endorsement of the case to the prosecutor and the prosecutor filing the case to the court. And we can now, upon the arrest of the apprehend, uh, upon the arrest of the perpetrator, we can now wait for the trial to prove his guilt. So that's the difference between crime cleared and crime solved. Sir, how about the definition of case solved? We call it a case solved. If, uh, yan, pwede, pwede rin yan. Crime cleared din yan. Uh, crime solved din yan. If the case was already solved. Case solved na eh. Yung kaso is solved. Okay? So that I didn't be the case or the perpetrator of that case was already identified. So, case solved na. And was, of course, the case must be filed. Yes, sir. Yun ang case called, uh, case solved. Para naman yung case, cold case. Yan. So, we also have here the term cold case. Ano naman yung cold case? We call it cold case if the case, ladies and gentlemen, remain to be unsolved. Within how many period? Approximately six months. But the safest uh, way of calling a case cold is when there is no evidence, there are no evidence that can link the crime to the suspect or there can, uh, the suspect cannot be identified. Okay? So in short, if there are no other evidence, the case may, could be, may be considered a cold case. So, ano ba yung mga cold case? Natulog na kaso, di ba? Wala nang ebidensyang mahagilap. Kasi kung may mahagilap na ebidensya sana, then we, it can lead to the identification of the perpetrators. 
di ba? O hindi matutulog yung kaso pag na-identify yung perpetrator. Aabot yan hanggang uh, trial, di ba? Hanggang sa conviction, sa kanyang conviction. Sana. So, after that, if the case is a cold case, if the local municipal police station's investigator was not able to solve the case within 6 months, but the case is heinous, which needs to be solved, an S uh, 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 SITD, SITG, a special investigation task group, may be created. Okay? It may be created for the purpose of solving that specific case. Last meeting, I had already mentioned you the purpose of the SITG, the creation of the SITG, and the plan to be formulated by the SITG. What can we call it? C plan, case investigation plan, directed towards the filing, uh, towards directed towards the uh, solution or solving of the unsolved case. Ano ba mostly yung proseso? Ano ba yung nangyayari mostly sa unsolved cases? Pagka yung municipal police station, hindi, hindi niya na-resolve yung kaso within 6 months, it will be endorsed. Pagka serious crime yan, mostly it will be endorsed to the higher level. So, the provincial level, tapos the regional level. Tapos mabubuo yung SITG. Still, after 6 months, pagka hindi pa rin na-resolve ng SITG, yung kaso, it may be turned over to the NBI. Pagka walang NBI na member, doon sa nagawang SITG, di ba? So, parang lalabas na parang mas matalino ang NBI sa PNP. Pero ganun talaga yung proseso pag hindi na-resolve. Kasi doon yung concentration ng NBI. Unlike the police, maraming trabaho yan. Hindi lang sa investigation yan. Nakikukos, di ba? <coughs> All around ang police. Kasi for investigation, primary talaga nila is crime prevention. Unlike your NBI, there's, uh, that's their only function, investigation. So, ganun. So, let's proceed with police operations. Police operations refers to those activities conducted in the field by law enforcement officers as they serve and protect. It includes the following. So, patrol for crime prevention, traffic for traffic management and accident investigation, investigation of crimes, or accident and even admin cases general calls for service so any activity that requires action is considered an operation so PCR police community relations can be considered an operation okay? service of warrant of arrest an operation checkpoint operation Search and rescue operation, search and retrieval operation, and so on and so forth. We have lots of police operations. Next is the executive order uh, on insurgency operations or the internal security operations. When we say internal security operations, it talks about the operation against the insurgents. Who are these insurgents? We call them sometimes the local terrorists or the Terrorist within the Philippine Territory. Anong pangalan nila? The CPP. Uh, the CNN. Ano ba yung CNN? The Communist Party of the Philippines, CPP. The New People's Army. Tapos the uh, NPA. Yan. Tapos the NDF. Ano yung NDF? The National Democratic Front. Yan. So, yan, isa yung organization yan. The CNN ang kabuan. CNN stands for CPP, NPA, NDF. Now, CPP stands for the Communist Party of the Philippines. NPA stands for the New People's Army. And NDF, the National Democratic Front. So, yan yun. Anti-insurgency operations. Now, what specific unit of the PNP conducts anti-insurgency operations? It is our elite force. So, sino yan? The Special Action Force. Now, the Special Action Force, ladies and gentlemen, has a counterpart in the regional level. Who are they? We call them the RMFB. Anong uh, ibig sabihin ng RMFB? 
which stands for the Regional Mobile Force Battalion, RMFB. And likewise, the RMFB has a counterpart in the provincial level. We call them the PMFC. Ano yung PMFC? Provincial Mobile Force Company. So, the, they are the counterpart of the Special Action Force. The Special Action Force in the National Headquarters, in the regional level, its counterpart is the RMFB. And in the provincial level, the Provincial Mobile Force Company. With the creation of the <laughs> of the Area Police Command, ladies and gentlemen, patterned with the AFP, uh, which acts as a directorate, this Area Police Command or the APC are the uh, supervisory office of this mobile forces. So, yung, yan, yung, yan yung ano, APC, Area Police Command. Yan yung trabaho nila. They supervise the elite force and the mobile forces. So, we have five APCs, di ba? In the police organization. We have the APC, Northern Luzon. Area Police Command, Southern Luzon. Area Police Command, Visayas. Area Police Command, Western Mindanao and APC Eastern Mindanao. Before it was called APC, ang dating pangalan po niyan, ladies and gentlemen, is DIPO. Ano yung DIPO na yan? Directorate for Integrated Police Operation. So, ano ba trabaho ng DIPO noon? So, ganun din, di ba? Pagka mayroon tayong uh, NPA na nag-operate sa two or more region, it's the job of the DIPO to cooperate or to co and to coordinate the operation with those two regions involved. So, yan. Ngayon, napalitan yung pangalan niya. Instead of DIPO, APC na siya, Area Police Command. And at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, please take note that the ranks of the heads of the Area Police Command, yung mga rank ko ng pinaka-ulo nila sa headquarters, in the headquarters, is Police Lieutenant General. So, ilang star ba ang Lieutenant General? Ay, Police Lieutenant General. Ilang star? Tatlo po yan, ladies and gentlemen. Three. So, if you will be encountering an exam or a board, board exam question later on, asking for the number of three star generals in the PNP organization, lima, uh, lima na kagad sa APC. Plus the three. Sino pa yung tatlo? Isama nyo yung directorate, deputy directorate for administration, deputy directorate, uh, deputy directorate tuloy. Isama nyo na yung the deputy chief PNP for administration, the deputy chief PNP for operations, and the chief directorial staff. So, tatlo, lieutenant general din yung mga yun. So, doon pa lang, mayroon na tayong walo. So, obsolete na yung tatlo lang, na yung deputy lang sasabihin nyo. Yung dalawang deputy plus the TCDS, the chief directorial staff. Dina, kasama rin dyan yung limang heads of the APC. So, let's talk about master plans. Master plan Sandigan. The anti-criminality master plan. It was briefly discussed before. Ulitin lang natin. So, concept of operations. Its strategic concept is to improve the police security service package the anti criminality master plan to improve the police security service package to strengthen linkages with national government offices local and international law enforcement organizations so ano ba yung mga international law enforcement organizations natin so, first on the list is the Interpol, di ba? International Police. Its long name is ICPO, which, which stands for International Criminal Police Organization. How many member states does the ICPO have? As of the moment, ladies and gentlemen, we have total of 195. Unlike the United Nations, ang member ng United Nations is 193 countries. Di ba? Yan. The Armed Forces of the Philippines 
and the presidential task force and centers as venues for interagency and international cooperation and support. So it aims to enhance the community participation through the Community Oriented Policy System or the COPS. So it encourages cooperation, participation from the community. It aims to operationalize the integrated area community public safety plan. So yan yung sinasabi natin last meeting na ginagawa. Operationalize the Integrated Area or Community Public Safety Plan. Any safety plan uh, that prevents crimes, maintains peace and order, and maintains public safety. Promote the objectives of an active criminal justice system. And also devise an effective feedback mechanism. When you say feedback mechanism, uh, it should gather information about the effectiveness and efficiency of the units who does this plan sandigan. Kung effective ba o hindi. Kung ano ang hindi effective, then we can modify to make it effective. So that's the purpose of the feedback mechanism. Para makita natin kung maganda ba ang feedback niya sa community o hindi. Yung implementation of the master plan sandigan, did it help in the crime prevention efforts or not? Did it help in the crime solution efforts or not? <laughs> if not, edi palitan natin kung ano man yung hindi nakakatulong. Kung effective, then we may maintain its implementation. Next is Master Plan Sandugo, also known as the PNP Internal Security Operations Master Plan. So, Sandugo. Madugo ang bakbakan sa kagubatan. So, trabaho ng SAP yan, di ba? The Special Action Force. So, what are the strategic concept of this Master Plan? The PNP shall basically support the AFP's ISO. Okay? So, the PNP is support to the AFP's Internal Security Operations as provided for by Executive Order 110. That's, I say again, that's Executive Order 110. Campaign Plan Balangay Through the conduct of limited internal security operations, sustained law enforcement and police community relations activities, intensive information gathering, and the conduct of investigation and prosecution of inter internal security operation related cases so campaign plan balangay up to up to prosecution of the local terrorist yeah. but my question here is we have the law diba, which punishes uh, punishes terrorism here in the philippines it is no other than the human security act of uh, 2007 Human Security Act but one of the problem with the Human Security Act is if we accuse someone to be a terrorist and it was later on found out that he was or that is the case against him was uh, dismissed or he was later on acquitted the government will be fined 500,000 <coughs> 500, pesos per day okay so the government will be fined 500,000 pesos per day of the uh, detainment of the accused so kada araw na nakulong yung accused mamumulta yung government ng 500,000 kaya mahirap talagang mag-akusa ng terrorist. Eh kung ganyan pala sir, wala palang kwenta, wag na lang tayo mag-file ng kasong ganyan para hindi tayo mamulta. Ayun nga. 
Kaya nung nilang sa file natin, is there a remedy? Yes, there is a remedy. Medyo mahirap yung pag-file natin ng case in relation to the Human Security Act. But we can file the more specific case against that insurgent or that local terrorist. So, ano yung pwede natin i-file na kaso? Pagka yung kasong ginawa niya, pagka itong uh, NPA ay gun for hire, hindi so pwede yung kaso niya is homicide or murder. Di ba? Pagka NPA, ang kaso niya ay uh, ano kaya? Naunguha, naungutong ng protection money from the businessman hindi pwede yung extortion. Diba? So, yun, yung mga pwede yung specific natin na i-file sa kanila. Ngayon, pagka yung businessman na hiningan niya, hindi nagbigay. Diba? Hindi nagbigay yung businessman na hiningan ng mga NPA. Hindi sila binigyan. Ang gagawin ngayon, mostly ng uh, NPA, ibabalikan yan, babalikan yan. Tapos, susunugin yung mga ari-arian nung businessman na yun. Pagka yung businessman ay contractor, susunugin nila yung heavy equipment ng contractor. Pagka yung businessman ay transport transportation owner, let's say for example, bus company, mag, susunugin nila yung mga bus. Diba? Yun. So, pwede natin gawin, file lang sila ng kasong arson instead of violation of RA of the Human Security Act. The PNP campaign plan shall also follow the clear, full support operational methodology as here indicated in support to the integration efforts of the military and other civilian agencies of the government as envisioned in the NPDP and the strategy of the total approach. When we say total approach, the totality of the approach of all government for, uh, forces uh, or offices in combating insurgency. So we have here the term combat operations. What is combat? What are combat operations? This shall mean offensive and defensive. So when we say offensive, we will be the per, the unit attacking. When we say defensive, we will be on the defense. Okay, we will be protecting our bases. We will be protecting the community. So this shall mean offensive and defensive operations such as attack, counter attack, bombing, artillery, barrage, and other tactical actions involving the use of bigger tactical forces bigger caliber weapons, bigger armored vehicles, and both air and naval weapons system. So that's combat operations against the insurgents, of course. So we have here the word internal security operations. ISO, or internal security operations, are activities designed to preserve internal security against insurgents. Okay? It preserves internal security. Against whom? Against the insurgents. Or secessionists uh, and terrorists. Among others, it includes territorial defense operations. It includes intelligence. It includes combat, military, and police-civil relations and psychological operations or in short psyops and so it includes psyops so the target of the internal security operations are the insurgents the terrorists or the <coughs> the sessionists Support to combat operations. When we say support to combat operations, it deals with assisting the lead, the lead agency in internal security operations with personnel and material resources within the capability of the PNP. Because who is again the lead agency in ISO? 
it is the PNP. The PNP is a support. Definition of terms. Integrated Area Community Public Safety Plan or the IA slash CPSP is the blueprint for the protection of lives and properties in a given locality. So it's a plan blueprint of protection lives and properties. So we should say anti-criminality. Why? Because this, uh, crimi uh, this criminality kills lives. Yeah and destroys properties yun din para sa pareho lang sa sinabi natin last meeting its concept requires the total mobilization of all available resources and the simultaneous conduct of complementary programs that will involve the civilian the police and military components of the society so it involves Complementary programs from civilian, police, and military components. When we say complementary programs, <coughs> programs that complete what was lacking or what is lacking. Diba? Unlike your words, supplementary, the program is already completed, but we but it, it only add, adds up. Then you supplementary, it only adds up. Unlike your complementary, it will be completed. It completes something that lacks something. It lacks, uh, it completes a program that lacks something. Some aspect or some resources and so on and so forth. Next is Master Plan Sang Yaman. The PNP is Master Plan to help protect and preserve our environment, cultural properties, and natural resources. So, DNR-related function. So, the strategic concept of this master plan is the operationalization of the Integrated Area Community Public Safety Plan. The employment of both territorial units, so when you say territorial, territorial units, the national headquarters in the municipal police station, yan, provincial and regional, di ba? So, territorial. And selected national support units. So, when you say national support units, uh, pwede yan yung mga any words that ends up, uh, ends with the word service pagka national administrative support unit such as chaplain service kung kailangan yung chaplain service di ba kung kailangan ng simba doon sa activity pagka naman national operational support unit it ends with the word group o ano ulit ang sample niyan CIDG if the program touches investigation function di ba pwede rin tayo Makipagkulungan sa National Support Units. In the conduct of all out and sustained campaign to protect and preserve our environment, natural heritage, excuse me, natural resources should be executed in tandem with concerned government agencies. Excuse me. Next is Master Plan Sang Ingat. So, the Master Plan on Security Preparations. Uh, by the way, by, by the way, so what type of uh, operations are related to the implementation of Master Plan Sang Yaman? Yan. So, it includes here, ladies and gentlemen, Checkpoint operation. Why? Because in checkpoint operation, one of our subject in checkpoint is illegal logging, di ba? Illegal mining, 
illegal possession of chainsaw. Yan. Illegal fishing. Di ba? So, yun. Yan yung mga in-implement natin in relation to this master plan. We have the term kaingin system. When we say kaingin system, it is the burning of a mountain. That is illegal. So, pwede natin huliin yung gumawa ng kaingin. So, we have here master plan sangingat, master plan on security preparations. This is primarily implemented by the PSPG. What is PSPG? Police Service ah, Police Service Police Security I say again, Police Security and Protection Group. So, yan yung PSPG. So, the strategic concept of this master plan are as follows. The Police Security Containment Ring System or PSCRS the operationalization of an IA CPSP, the community involvement to the community oriented policing system COPS, the effective well, the effective feedback mechanism, and the following task group may be established under the task force depending on the situation. So, the PSPG may also have airport security task group. So, in cooperation, in coordination with the AVSEC group. Ano ba yung AVSEC group? Aviation Security Group. We also have the term closed in security, security task group. So, when we say closed in, these are security detail who are within the perimeter closest to the VIP, to the very important person. So if in case, let's say for example, the president or any politician is in the midst of his speech, tapos biglang nagka, nagkaroon ng tunog ng putok, anong gagawin nito mga close-in? They will immediately cover that VIP with their body while firing back, di ba? So, yun ang gagawin, gagawin ng close-in. And they will, after that, they will extract the VIP to the, to their vehicle and extract their VIP to a safe place. We also have the what you call convoy security task group. So, when we say convoy, alam yun ang trabaho, di ba? They serve as bodyguard of the VIP's vehicle kung saan siya sumakay. Part of the convoy security task group are also decoy vehicles. So, ano ba yung mga decoy vehicles? So, this is a vehicle which would make it appear that the VIP had road, di ba? Doon sumakay yung VIP. Tapos na yun, yun yung susundan ng ating assassin or yung mga criminal no uh, hoping or knowing with the knowledge that it is their prey who was uh, seated or who is on board that decoy vehicle pero iba pala diba? so iba pala we also have here bullet security task group so we say bullet security task group Ayan, yung mga bag, uh, pwedeng mag-protect. Mga nakabulit uh, proof, of course. And fight back. We also have the root security task group. So, sila naman yung mga deployed sa ating kalsada. Kung saan dadaan yung ating VIP, eh, yun yung mga pro-protection na nila para walang mag-set up ng ambush along the way. So, root security task group ang tawag doon. We also, we also have here the area or site security task group. Aside from the road security, ladies and gentlemen, we have the what we call area or site security task group. So, anong gagawin ng area or site security task group? 
Sila yung mga magpapatrolya within the area kung saan man pupunta yung VIP. So, mag-roving, mag-reconing to detect possible plan. Kung may para may plano doon to assassinate someone, eh di, di would uh, cooperate and coordinate such information. They would coordinate such information to the proper office. So, area security. To make sure that the area of operation to be visited by the VIP is safe. So, next is master plan sa Klolo, The master plan for disaster preparedness. So, which office in the PNP is primarily tasked with disaster preparedness? It is the PCRG. PCRG and for the deployment operations. operations. While the admin will issue travel orders. So, master plan disaster preparedness. So, it's strategic concept are as follows. Continuously improving police security service package. The operationalization of integrated area community public safety plan. The community involvement through the community oriented policing system, COPS. The effective feedback mechanism. So, walang bago, di ba? So, what are the activities that should be undertaken in relation to uh, to this master plan? Anong master plan nito? Ah, saklolo. So, rescue. So, in relation to master plan, saklolo. So, preparation. We have to prepare prior dispatch or prior rescuing. Because instead of we are the persons rescuing, baka tayo pa yung i-rescue. Nakakaya. Organization. We have to organize our rescue teams and our logistical requirements. Coordination. So, we have to coordinate all of our actions. And even plans. And accounting of all personnel before deployment, during deployment, and after the deployment. So, we have here other police operations. So, we have here intelligence operation. When you say intelligence operation, it involves surveillance operation. And we know for a fact that surveillance operation includes shadowing or tailing of a subject which we call a rabbit or a hare. Okay? So, tao ang target natin. Aside from tailing or shadowing, we also have the what we call uh, stake out or casing. So, this is the observation of a particular place. Yeah, we call it casing. Next to casing, or stake out, we also have the what we call roping, R-O-P-I-N-G. It deals with the observation of an event. So usually it is applicable to organized criminals or organized crime group. Why do we have to observe an event? Because ladies and gentlemen, the suspect is a participant to that event. Thereby, we would like to determine his colleagues, his protectors, his suppliers, and so on and so forth. Any information we can come up with. So, we have to determine and observe. Uh, we have to observe an event. Aside from that, part of intelligence operation is the undercover assignment. So, what is an under undercover assignment? It is the utilization, ladies and gentlemen, of an agent in plain clothes to investigate, diba? To investigate. So when we say to investigate, to gather pieces of evidence against 
the organized crime group or the syndicate. So, yun ang trabaho ng ating undercover agent. So, who do we call an undercover agent? Undercover agent may come in two, in two types. So, pwedeng dalawa yan. We call him infiltrating agent if it's the PNP who trained him to be a spy. Diba? And later on, he will be sent to the target organized crime group to member himself there and to observe and to gather information and pieces of evidence uh, pieces of evidence in relation to the organization the structure of the organization the members thereof their, their supplier their, their buyers their cuddlers, their protectors the boss, the underboss the consigliere the capo diba? and all available information or evidence concerning the target syndicate so that's the job of an undercover agent now the second type of an undercover agent is the penetrating agent so the first one is infiltrating he was recruited by the PNP while the penetrating agent is an agent who is already a member of the target syndicate but was recruited by the PNP to serve as an agent for the benefit of the PNP. So, yun ang tinatawag natin, penetration agent. So, what are the example of penetration agent? Uh, pwede. This can be one example. One example of a penetrating agent is a person who was apprehended by the PNP, a member of the crime uh, organized crime group. He is the weakest member of the organized crime group. Where the PNP made a bargain with him. So, anong bargain yan? We will be protecting you. We will be protecting your family. So long as you gather evidence for us. So, we could catch the big fish and we can burn, them da burn the syndicate down. The organized crime group down. So, pwedeng ganyan. Yan yung penetrating agent na sinasabi. Unlike your infiltrating agent, he was not connected in any way to the organized crime group, uh, yan, but he was recruited by the PNP. Next to intelligence operation, we have here checkpoint and choke point operation. When we say checkpoint operation, alam nyo naman na yung mga police na deployed sa mga kalsa, di ba? So, checkpoint operations is conducted by a team. So, mostly team. It is a team operation. When we say team operation, at least it composed of 8, minimum of 8 dapat. And uh, it should be headed by a police commissioned officer with a rank of, minimum rank of police lieutenant. So, at least officer dapat yung head ng checkpoint. Operation. Now, in the absence of uh, police lieutenant, who may lead the checkpoint team? So, in the absence of police lieutenant, lead the most ranking with the rank of PEMS. Now, follow-up question. Paano naman, sir, kung lahat may, may tatlong PEMS? May tatlong PEMS. Ano may ang basihan? So, after that, we will... Among the three PEMs, we will determine the leader based on the seniority. Kung sino ang most senior sa kanila. So, I, I repeat, ladies and gentlemen, ha, mauna yung ranking na base yan. Pagka isa lang yung PEMs, automatic siya ang team leader. Pagka walang lieutenant, walang lieutenant. Pero pagka may lieutenant, automatic lieutenant ang leader or other officers, higher officers, kung meron man. Pero... The lowest uh, rank of a team leader in the checkpoint operation is police lieutenant. In the absence of officers, in the absence of lieutenant, police lieutenant, pwede ang PEMS, the highest rank, diba? the most ranking officer, PNCO, I mean, the most ranking police non-commissioned officer. Now, let's say for example, how about uh, lahat nga sila, uh, tatlo nga sila PEMS, the, we select among the most 
senior. Kung sino yung most senior among those uh, three PEMs, Police Executive Master Sergeant, then he can be, or he will be the team leader for such operation. So that's your checkpoint operation. So what are we, or what are the subjects in a checkpoint operation? Ladies and gentlemen, take note that in checkpoint operation, we are, all, uh, we are only allowed to do it in plain view. So bawal mangalkal. As far as possible, bawal mangalkal. So plain view yan. Plain view doctrine. So dapat nakikita natin na may kontrabando. So in a checkpoint operation, it is composed of, so mayroon siyang composition ha, mayroon siyang advance party from the incoming to out, outgoing. So malayo yan, advance party. So anong gamit ng mga advance party? Reserve as spotter, di ba? So may spot nila yung mga possible na uh, uh, may contrabands. And aside from that, oras na nakapasok na yung possible suspect tapos biglang nag-U-turn, aharangin niya yung nag-U-turn, di ba? So that's one of the functions of the spotter or the what we call advanced party. Na next next is the the searcher. Yeah. So sino yung searcher? Uh, he is a member of the checkpoint team assigned in the checkpoint area sa sentro mismo in the middle. Di ba? And he does the searching. How does he search? Through plain view. So tingnan niya lang. So, aside from that, aside from the searcher, we also have there the leader and assistant team leader. Diba? So, yun yung mga mostly na members ng checkpoint team. Ang pinaka-importante lang doon is the checker and the spotter mostly we also have here the term choke point operation what is choke point operation uh, take note ladies and gentlemen ha? checkpoint by the way should be conducted in a well lighted area so it must be conducted in a well lighted area so dapat may ilaw may ilaw na kalsada may ilawan ng street light aside from that it must be headed by a police non commissioned officer with a rank of Lieutenant, diba? Police Lieutenant, at least Lieutenant, pataas. And at the same time, there must be a mobile, marked vehicle, diba? So, dapat may mobile daw doon. That's a prerequisite. In relation to uh, the Comunic Checkpoint, meron ngayon dapat nakalagay yung placard, diba? So, dapat may placard. Tapos nakalagay yung team leader. The team leader is uh, coming from the Comelec. Kumbaga, so dapat may kasama tayong Comelec. Not, not, not really, it does not really happen on the field, pero at least makalagay yung, malagay sa uh, placard yung Comelec representative. Tapos the team leader of the checkpoint team. So with the rank of police lieutenant, yung pinakamababa. In the absence of the president, pwedeng fence. The most ranking fence. Now, how does checkpoint operation differ from chalk point operation? So, we have here lots of references. Diba? Uh, explaining the difference between checkpoint operation and chalk point operation. But, for me, I do uh, say that the difference between checkpoint and choke choc point operation is in checkpoint when the vehicle pass your checkpoint they can go forward they can proceed diba unlike in your choke point operations it blocks okay it blocks all exit ways so paano nangyari ganito a crime had just been Committed. This crime is related to national security. Oh, national security ang involved, ba? So, ang advice ng Tactical Operation Center, close all exit ways. So, pagka-close, walang makakalabas, di ba? And search for a vehicle, red-colored Innova, with plate number 
ending in uh, five. Parang ganyan. So, hanapin talaga yan. Choke point operation, wala talaga makakalabas. Unlike checkpoint, after the, the after the vehicle was inspected, then they can proceed to their direction kung saan man sila pupunta. Sa choke point, hindi na sila talaga makakalabas. Gandun na sila, stuck na sila. Unless cleared or lifted. Next is the search and rescue operation. When we say search and rescue operation, there, ha uh, there are lots of activities where the PNP could uh, do search and rescue operation. Pwedeng in a vehicular traffic accident, pwedeng, pwedeng in partnership with the BFP, what type of operation, di ba? Fire suppression operation of the BFP. Aside from that, during period of calamity, ano ba yung mga calamity? Ano ba yung mga national disaster? Yan, earthquake, La Nina, El Nino, uh, ano ba ba? Landslide, and so on and so forth. Dahil effect of uh, illegal mining. So, those are part of search and rescue operation. So long as there is a person or an animal that needs to be rescued, searched and rescued, we call that operation a search and rescue operation. If let's say for example, a mine, a miner, a tourist, local or foreign, uh, foreign, local, foreign tourist went into the mountain, di ba? Namasyal sa mountain, nag-hiking, nawala. Pinahanap sa pulis. Kasi 24 hours ang nawawala. E search and rescue operation ang tawag doon. We also have the what we call retrieval operations or search and retrieval operation. We call it retrieval operation if the subject to search is already deceased kung namatay na. Kunwari, land, landslide, di ba? Natabunan ng landslide yung mga tao. Tapos, mga 24 hours nang matabunan. The, what do we expect? We expect na patay na, di ba? So, retrieval operations na lang. The purpose is to retrieve their bangkay, di ba? Their remains. We also have here the service of warrant of arrest. So, kung meron man tayo wanted person, we serve his warrant of arrest. We also have here the service of search warrant. So, what is the subject for search warrant? We are looking here for contraband, di ba? An object of a crime. So, pwedeng the fruit of the crime or pwedeng contraband, pwedeng weapon. Unlike uh, service of warrant arrest, our subject here are wanted person. Pwedeng wanted person with reward, pwedeng wanted person without reward. We also have here marijuana eradication. So, the operatives will hike and search for marijuana and eradicate that marijuana in that marijuana plantation. During the operation, they will burn the marijuana diba? after they have uprooted it. But it will be witnessed by the media and member of the uh, locality. Yan. The marijuana eradication. We also have here police community affairs development operations or police community relations operations. Any relations that deals with the engagement between the police and the community. So we call it PCAD or PCR operations. Next is the internal security operation. So, alam nyo na yan. It refers to the operation conducted against insurgents, against the NPA, the CNN, the CPP, NPA, and the F. Diba? Uh, ano pa ang pinagkaiba ng CPP, NPA, and the F? Ang napapansin nyo, NDF sila yung mga matatalino. So, matatalino sila yung mga nagde-defend. 
sa mga nahuling NPA. Sila yung mga claim ng human human rights, di ba? Yan yung NDF, mostly intelligente. Pwedeng lawyers, yan. Yan yung mga NDF. Pero naman yung NPA, sila naman yung armed wing. When we say armed wing, sila yung nakikipagdigma. Sila yung armado, yung mga may baril. Di ba? Pero naman yung mga CPP, the Communist Party of the Philippines. Ano naman yung kanilang mga ginagawa? Mostly, sila naman, they organize rallies. Sila naman yung mga nag-organize ng mga rallies. So, the CPP and NDF can do organize rallies. But, uh, sino ang brain? Sino ang brain? It's the NDF. Sino ang heart? It's the NPA. We also have here anti-kidnapping operations. So, any operation of the PNP which addresses kidnapping incident. We also have here by-bust operation. Uh, Anti-kidnapping operations is the primary function of the AKJ. What is the AKJ? Anti-kidnapping group of the Philippine National Police. By-bust operation is the term of uh, the operation in relation to implementation of RA-9165, di ba? Na dangerous drug act. So, who does by-bust operation? In the PNP. In the PNP unit, who does the by operation? Ladies and gentlemen, it is no other than the PDEG, the Philippine Drug Enforcement Group. But, uh, externally, the PDEA, the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency. Now, how does the by operation, uh, or how is by operation conducted, ladies and gentlemen? A uh, PNP member or agent, pwede civilian, kasi meron din agent, di ba? Pwede tayong mag, mag-hire ng agent with kontrata. So, pwede civilian yon, pwede uniform din na agent. So, we have here an agent or a PNP member in plain clothes who will serve as a buyer of what? Of illegal drugs. Pwede marijuana, uh, ecstasy, shabu, cocaine, and so on and so forth. So, bibili. Pero bago siya bumili, bago bumili yon yung ating agent, the buy, the buy bus money was already processed. So, saan siya napaprocess? Pwedeng support. It was docketed. Uh, docketed. Ni kinuhanan ng number. Uh, na record yung mga serial number niya. Yan. For identification purposes later on. O kaya, kung hindi man, pwedeng the buy bus money must be powdered. So, nilagyan ng powder. Ngayon, yung powder na yon, pwede kasing matrack doon yung fingerprint later on magmatch o kaya pwede magmatch na o oh, parehong powder component niya. So, same. That, uh, that was that money recovered from the pocket of the respondent or of the suspect was the money, the marked money. Diba? So, yan. Ang gamit kasi yan. Kaya kailangan nating markahan yung buy money. Okay? So, upon the transaction, when the when the pusher buyer, pusher buyer kasi ang tawag natin doon, yung agent or police na mag act na buyer, when the pusher buyer now pays the pays for the illegal drugs, they can immediately apprehend. Yeah. They can immediately apprehend the seller. So, yan yun. The buy bus operation. Now, there was an incident in Tanbato, Quezon City, where the QCPD had uh, an encounter with the PDEA. Ang sabi ng QCPD, they were doing a buy bus operation. Why? Ang sabi naman ni PDEA, they were doing a sell bus operation. So, kabalik parang ni buy bus operation. Miso say, pagka sell bus, sa kanila nang galing yung droga, kung meron bang bibili, huhuliin nila yung bibili. Di ba? Huhuliin nila yung bibili. Now, the question is, Sir, is that sell bus valid? Is that, is that valid or is that unlawful? Ladies and gentlemen, there's no such an operation, di ba? 
as cell bus. Wala dapat ganyan. It is somewhat related to instigation. Parang instigation kasi yan eh. In the first place, magkakaroon ba ng krimen kung wala ka na nagdala ng droga? Sila yung nagdala ng droga eh. Dala, na, dala nila yung droga. Kung walang, wala, wala silang dalang, dalang droga, walang crime no commit. And at the same time, the mere possession of the drug is already violation of RA 9165. Diba? So parang instigation yun. We have two types of uh, uh, type of operation in relation to this kasi. Entrapment operation and instigation. We call it entrapment operation if uh, if we conducted by mass operation, diba? By mass operation, tapos upon paying for that illegal service or for that illegal uh, product, we can apprehend the perpetrator by mass yun. Pero yung cell bus, it's like Instigation. Ano ba yung instigation? It works in this manner. A police officer, let's say for example, instructed Juan. Diba? Inutusan niya si Juan. So he instructed Juan to sell drugs. Tapos, later on, sa kahuhuliin ng police officer si Juan. Diba? So instigation, parang pinant niya. Parang magka-accomplishment siya. Diba? That's Instigation. The instigation is illegal. Unlike your entrapment, valid yun. However, uh, entrapment, the term entrapment is usually term nga lang, uh, the term usually used nga lang in staffa cases, in uh, recruitment, illegal recruitment cases, ano pa ba, saan pa ba nagagamit yung entrapment operation, in uh, white slavery or prostitution, yung mga ganyan. So, entrapment operation, most yung term nila doon. Pero pagkasa na drugs, by bus operation ang tawag. So that's the entrapment operation. So paano, anong example ng entrapment operation? Yung parang ganito. Uh, the police officer acted as a an applicant. Paano ang paano applicant? Gusto niya mag-abroad, sana. Diba? So in relation to illegal rec recruitment. Nag-act siya na parang gusto niya mag-abroad. Tapos ngayon, sabi ng illegal recruiter, uh, you have to pay this, you have to pay this, ang lalaking halaga. Then by tomorrow, sigurado mag-flight ka na. Diba? Tapos, uh, ito pa lang muna yung kaya kong bayaran. So, nagbayad muna siya ng konti. So, parang test buy muna. Tapos second, nag-text ngayon itong illegal recruiter, ako uh, lang yung ano, binagay mo, dapat kailangan mong kumplituin para makapag-flight ka na. Pero prior that, marami ng complainant against the uh, against the person. So, you know, kunwari, kahit sabi natin, binayaran ulit nung, ano, nung officer. Tapos, upon payment, pwede na nilang huliin upon uh, receipt of the mark money. Upon receipt of the respondent or the suspect, the mark money, pwede na huliin. Diba? O kaya, in relation to prostitution, may nagpanggap na na police o agent na magbabayan ng services ng mga white slave. Upon receipt of the mark money, eh, huhuliin na yung uh, ayun, yung nag-receive ng pera, ng mark money. That's your entrapment operation. Pwede rin sa mga estafa. Diba? Pagka mga estafador, magaling magsalita. Pero pagka nakuha na nila yung gusto nila, hindi mo na sila makukontact. Stapa doon. Next is your crisis management, disaster management, and intervention operation. So, when you say crisis management, it is a management of a crisis itself. Whenever there's a crisis, the PNP should be able to manage it. So, what's the purpose of, the, of managing the crisis? To prevent further harm or damages okay? and at the same time to rescue those affected or whenever applicable to relocate them same is true with your intervention operation so paano intervention if there's an unwanted incident then the police should respond we should intervene what What's, what should be the purpose of the intervention to prevent ay to reduce the effect of that incident that's one to secure the public 
and to prevent reoccurrence of similar incident. That's one. If they will not be able to prevent the occurrence of the incident, at least they should uh, reduce the effect of that incident. So, kaya kung hindi man nila napigilan, ay nabawasan yung effect ng incident, at least to prevent the reoccurrence para hindi na maulit. So, first stage negotiation operation, whenever there's a first stage, we, we should formulate our own first stage negotiation team. So, yan. First stage negotiation team. The objective in hostage negotiation is to save the hostage and at the same time, if possible, to save also the hostage taker. Then, to serve and protect life, liberty, and property as much as possible. Then. We also have the, what we call civil disturbance management operations. So, ano ba yung mga CDM operations na yan? Have you seen a police officer without firearm, but they have their ring? They have with them batuta. Ah, wala pa lang ring, ah. They have with them batuta and shield. Kaya shield and batun. So, that's that's their CDM equipment. Aside from that, hindi lang yun, ah. Mayroon din silang mga protector sa katawan. Na kahit na mapalo sila, hindi din sila masasaktan. Diba? Ang tawag doon, CDM equipment. Now, what's the purpose of uh, CDM operations? CDM operations is directed towards minimizing or reducing uh, hindi pala minimizing or reducing. It is directed towards the prevention of riot. Diba? In a rally. Bakit? Kaya kunwari may sona. Tapos maraming nag-organize ng uh, rally. Ang problema, hindi natin mapapatakyas kasi mayroon silang valid permit to rally. Pero ang iniwasan natin is the, the, is the commission of the crime. Na sana sa mga rallies, wala sanang gagawa ng krimen. Oras na may gumawa ng krimen, we have the right to apprehend those persons. In a secure way nga lang, na para hindi tayo, baka mamaya, may day ko ilang parasla. Tapos may police officer na humabol. Paghabol niya, siya pala ngayon yung hinuli ng mga rallyista. Baliktad na yun, di ba? So, make sure that we have to apprehend violators or crime uh, offenders in the CTM in a safe way. So, in addition to CDM operations, ladies and gentlemen, if you are wondering how does it work, you can correlate it with the strategy in the Spartan 300. You moving the Spartan 300. In the Spartan 300, ladies and gentlemen, they use shield and a spear. So, meron silang shield and spear. And they they have the formation. Diba? We're in, magkakarikit yung mga shield. So, pagka pinana, pinana sila, they were rained arrows. Pinana, o kaya binato ng mga arrows. They will all, they will execute the umbrella formation. So, magtatago sila, they will group themselves organizedly and itataas nila yung mga shield which will now protect them from arrows. So, walang, walang may isa na matatamaan sa kanila. But the problem is, pagka may isang shield na bumigay, it will lead to the total na disruption. Pwede masira yung buong defense ng uh, Spartan 300. Same uh, concept applies with CDM. So, dapat firm, magkakasunod-sunod, overlapping yung mga CDM uh, contingents with their, with their shield. You know, na pagka isang shield lang ang bumigay, automatic, na doon na papasok yung mga radista, doon sa isang shield na bumigay, pwede na silang atakihin defense, uh, uh, without defense yung mga CDM contingent, yung mga police. So, that's our CDM operations. Where should be the CDM contingent be located from the rallies? Approximately, dapat nasa 50 meters ang distance. 50 meters dapat ang distance. Now, in relation to Oplan Sang Inyat, the VIP master plan, 
we have here again the VIP security operations. So you see VIP security operations. It is an operation directed toward the protection of a very important person. Now, who implements that? It's the PSPG again. I repeat, the PSPG, the Police Security Protection Group. The PSPG, yan, the PSPG. Yan yung pagkamay putok. Mga maril na narinig, extract ka agad nila yung VIP nila, isasakay sa sasakyan. Tapos, exit ka agad. The, uh, the President of the Republic of the Philippines has its own PSG. Ano yung PSG? The Presidential Security Group. So, the function of the Presidential Security Group is to protect the President. Di ba? At all costs. Parang ganun rin sa trabaho ng PSPG rin. Pagka yung uh, may activity yung President, bigla may putok ng baril na narinig, then the PSG shall extract, protect and extract the President. Diba? From that place. So, yan yung ating VIP security operations. So, who are the subject of VIP security operations? Who are these VIPs, by the way? So, sama na natin yan, the president, the high-ranking public officials, the foreign diplomats, and so on and so forth. VIP security operations. Next is the anti-cybercrime operations. What unit in the, what unit of the PNP implements the anti-cybercrime operation? It's the Anti-Cybercrime Group or the ACG. So, they implement what law? They implement the Anti-Cybercrime Act. Anti-Cybercrime Group. Aside from this, ito lang ba yun? Oh, kulang. Aside from this, AKG, ACG, ano ba ba? If you have observed, ladies and gentlemen, most of the most of the national operational support unit have their own operation aligned with their functions. So, ano pang meron dyan? Meron na tayong AKJ, di ba? Anti-kidnapping group. Meron na tayong anti-cybercrime group, di ba? Ang in-implement nila, yung anti-cybercrime law. Meron din tayong yung uh, PSPG. Ano yung PSPG? Police Security and Protection Group. VIP security, di ba? Aside from that, meron pa tayong aviation security group, di ba? Ano ginagawa ng aviation security group? We maintain the security in the airport, di ba? Aside from that, we also have the uh, CIDG, Criminal Investigation and in Detection Group. So, whenever there's a crime, they conduct investigation and they file appropriate criminal charges against that accused or respondent or suspect and at the same time, apprehend the violator of the law. Aside from the CIDG, we also have the Highway Patrol Group. Di ba? Anong ini-implement ng Highway Patrol Group? The Anti-Kidnap... Ah, Anti-Kidnapping tuloy. The Anti-Kidnapping Act. Kidnapping Act. Di ba? So, yun. Uh, aside from that, ano pa yung mga National Operational Support Unit natin? Uh, the IMEG. The history behind IMEG, ladies and gentlemen, before it was, when President Duterte declared war on drugs, again, ang sabi ng community, ah, President, sino mag-implement ng war on drugs mo? The PNP. Hey, President, are you sure that uh, the PNP can be trusted? Kasi some members of the PNP are the ones selling illegal drugs or contraband. Don't worry. The PNP has the, has the CITF. Ano ba yung CITF? The Counter Intelligence Task Force. So, na-formulate yung Counter Intelligence Task Force na yun. Ang trabaho ng Counter Intelligence Task Force uh, noon, nung na-formulate in relation to the war on, war on drugs is they apprehend, di ba? They apprehend police officers who are doing illegal activities. So, what are the illegal activities? Pwedeng nagbebenta ng droga, pwedeng nangungutong, and other illegal acts or criminal acts. But the problem is, uh, the CITF is, by the way, under directly under the office of the chief PNP before, nung bagong gawa siya. But the problem with the CITF is parang may mali yata sa pangalan or may, ma may mali sa function. Kasi pagka counterintelligence task force, when we say counterintelligence, ang trabaho dapat niya is to protect the vital information against spy. 
parang intelligence. Ano ang trabaho dapat ng intelligence group? To gather information. Ano dapat ang trabaho ng counterintelligence group? To protect vital information of the state against spy para hindi maglik yung ating mga vital information. Yun dapat ang trabaho ng ng CITF. Hindi yun ang huli ng kriminal. Diba? So parang may mali. Pero, ang objective is, ang objective ng PNP in formulating the what we call CITF is to apprehend officers, PNP officers, who are committing crime. So, ang pinalitan, yung pangalan. So, tama yung ginagawa nila, nanguli sila ng mga taliwas na police. Pero ang mali, yung pangalan, may mali, may mali sa pangalan. Thereby, they renamed CITF into IMEG. Ano yung IMEG? Integrity Monitoring Enforcement Group. So, pagka ang police, ang primary function niya, to enforce law, dapat hindi to violate law, di ba? Ngayon, kung may police na nagpa-violate ng law, eh, dapat huliin. Sino ang manghuli? Na Integrity Monitoring Enforcement Group. Yun na yung integrity. Pagka law enforcer ka, dapat nag-enforce ka ng law. Hindi ka dapat nagpa-violate ng law, di ba? So, question. Tama na ba yung pangalan ni Integrity Monitoring uh, Enforcement Group? Tama na ba yung pangalan niya aligned with his function? Tama na, di ba? Tama. Kasi ang hinuhuli nila, yung mga law violators na police, na dapat eh, law enforcers nagpapatupad ng batas. So that's your IMEG. Aside from the IMEG, we also have the intelligence group. So ano ba ang intelligence group? They gather information, di ba? So that's already an operation. So they conduct surveillance, undercover assignments. O, ano pa? Ano pa yung mga national operational support group natin? The maritime group, di ba? We patrol, protect the natural resources within the marine resources. What else? The maritime group. The EOD K9 group, di ba? We investigate and prevent and detect explosives. EOD, bomb threats. We respond to bomb threats. Now, my point there, ladies and gentlemen, are there are units to which the name of the unit is also referring to their type of police operation. So, yun yung gusto ko lang sabihin. That's my point. So, uh, let's uh, discuss again standard operating procedures. The standard operating procedures or SOPs are products of police operational planning adapted by the uh, police organization to guide the police officers in the conduct of their duties and functions, especially during field operation. Kung baga, these are pre-determined set of operation already para yung police during uh, during his operation, hindi na siya mag-iisip kung anong gagawin niya. Bakit? Kasi mayroon na tayong set of standard na sinusunod. Di ba? Parang kayo rin during the enrollment. Di ba? Mayroon na kayong mga standard operating procedure during enrollment. Anong, anong ginagawa? Mostly, pre-enrollment pre bago magbakasyon. Ngayon, after the pre-enrollment, during the enrollment, dapat ipa-encode nyo yung pre-enrolled yung subject. After you have pre-enrolled your subject, pupunta kayo ngayon sa uh, cashier to pay your down payment. Full payment kung kaya nyo. Diba? After that, you will go to the ID section for the updating of your valid ID. Kung baka yun yung standard operating procedure, alam nyo na kung anong susunod per stage. After you have finished a stage, hindi yung mag-iisip ka pa kung ano kayang susunod, ano yung susunod. At least meron tayong standard operating procedure. Uh, the following are the police security service package of the PNP with the following standard operating procedures and guidelines. So, pag-usapan pag na rin natin itong mga SOPs na to. SOP number one, Police Beat Patrol Procedures. So, this SOP prescribes the basic procedures to be observed by all PNP units and mobile patrol elements in the conduct of visibility patrol. So, yan yung ating SOP number 1. SOP number 2 refers to Bantay Kalye. This SOP prescribes the deployment of 85% of the PNP in the field to increase police visibility and intensify crime, anti-crime campaign nationwide. So, pa, in relation to patrol pa rin to. Pero, Bantay Kalye, uh, we say, dapat yung mga personnel naka-deploy sa 
kalye visibility. Next is the siyasat SOP number 3. This SOP prescribes the guidelines in the conduct of inspections to ensure police visibility. So, means to say, sinisiyasat, sinesearch, kinakountercheck kung nakadeploy talaga yung ating mga designated patrollers in the area. Baka naman nagdeploy tayo tapos after one hour nawala na sila, umuwi na. Diba? So, that's the purpose of siyasat. Next is the SOP number 5, Ligtas or Anti-Kidnapping. With the creation of the Presidential Anti-Organization Crime Task Force or PAOCTF, the PNP is now in support role in campaign against kidnapping in terms of personal requirements. So, SOP number 5 sets forth the PNP's guidelines in its fight against kidnapping activities. Okay? So, SOP number 5 is against anti-kidnapping in relation to your uh, ayan, anti-kidnapping SOP number 5 in relation to the anti-kidnapping group AKJ. Next, SOP number 6 anti-carnapping so the task function of the highway patrol group. This SOP prescribes the conduct of an all-out and sustained anti-carnapping campaign to stop or minimize car napping activities, to neutralize syndicated car napping groups, identify prosecute government personnel involved in car napping activities, and to effectively address other criminal activities related to car napping. SOP number 7 is the anti-terrorism. So this prescribes the operational guidelines in the conduct of operations against terrorists and other lawless elements involved in terrorist activities. So we include here the ISO operation. We include here operations conducted by the SAF, the RMFB, and the PMFC. We include those operations uh, uh, created by the Area Police Command. Yan, anti-terrorism. Next is OP number 8, the Joint Anti-Bank Robbery Action Committee. So anti-bank robbery. This SOP provides overall planning, integration, orchestration, or coordination and monitoring of all efforts to ensure a successful implementation. So SOP number 8 is on anti-bank robbery. SOP number 9 on anti-hijacking or highway robbery. So pwedeng hijacking if the uh, target of the criminal is a plane. Pwedeng highway robbery if they do it on land in the highways. So this SOP sets forth the guidelines and concept of operations to be observed in the conduct of anti-highway robbery or hold up or hijacking operations. That's your SOP number 9. SOP number 10 is paglalansag or pag-aayos. This SOP sets for the concept of operation and task of all concerned units in the campaign against partisan armed groups or private armed groups and loose firearm. Yan. So, paglalansag, pag-aayos. So, huhuliin, hinuhuli kasi lahat ng mga loose firearm. So, ano ba yung mga loose firearm? These are firearms that are unregistered or unrenewed. Pwede siyang previously na-registered, pero hindi na-renew. Diba? Pagka hindi na-renew yung uh, firearms registration na yan, that firearm is already considered a loose firearm. We also call it loose firearm yung mga ano, uh, homemade guns. Mga homemade guns. Improvised guns. Next is OP11, Manhunt Bravo. The neutralization of wanted persons. So, manhunt, di ba? Wanted person neutralization. This SOP sets for the objective and concept of operation, task of all concerned units in the neutralization of wanted persons. SOP 11 on anti-illegal gambling. This SOP sets for the operational trust to be undertaken by the PNP that will be spearheaded or that will spearhead the fight against all forms of illegal gambling nationwide. So, ano ba yung mga illegal gambling natin? Na cut fighting, di ba? So, aside from cut fighting, ano pa? Numbers 
hindi uh, number game mga kwete ano pa di card games di ba and all forms of gambling wherein there is an amount of cash involved yan so illegal gambling yan SOP 13 the anti squatting so this SOP sets forth the concept of operation in a campaign against professional squatters and squatting syndicates yan kasi meron tayo talaga mga squatting syndicate anong mga ginagawa ng mga squatting syndicate yung palalayasin nila porque hindi nakapag-aral yung mga cultural minority pupunta sila dun sa lugar ng cultural minority tapos magpapatayo di ba magpapatay ng kanilang kubo dun ang problema pa dun mas mauna pa sila mag-apply ng tax deck kaysa dun sa kaysa dun sa indigenous people na matagal nang naninirahan dun sa area na yun yun kasi yung problema dun so pagka nauna silang nag-apply ng tax deck eh medyo may lumalaban talaga lalo na pagka may 10 years na silang nagbabayad ng tax deck anti-squatting pangagaw ng lupa SOP number 14 Jericho this SOP prescribes the operational guidelines to be undertaken by the national headquarters uh, by the way ang isang tao natin sa mga squatters are land grabbers diba? land grabbers pangagaw ng lupa SOP number 14 Jericho this SOP prescribes the operational guidelines to be undertaken by the national headquarters in its group of the Philippine National Police in the establishment of a quick reaction group that can be detailed with the Office of the Secretary of the Interior and Local Government, SILG, with personnel and equipment requires of that reaction group supported by the PNP. Yan. So, SOP prescribed the operational guidelines to be undertaken by the National Headquarters. So, it will be undertaken by the National Headquarters of the PNP in the establishment of a quick reaction group so quick reaction group Jericho that can be detailed with the office of the SILG with personnel and equipment requires of that reaction group supported by the PNP so whenever the SILG directs reaction towards something illegal they can deploy personnel formed by this SOP, Jericho, yan. Quick Reaction Force. Sa ISO operation naman, in relation to ISO operation, we also have lots of uh, units therein. Meron tayo sinasabing the pursuing team, yung uh, operating team, team. We also have the what we call blocking team. So sila naman yung magbablock in case na in case na tatakas or, or uh, tatakbo yung mga insurgents, the blocking team. We also we also have the what we call quick reaction force. Ano ba yung mga quick reaction force? Kapag ka na pa-encounter si operating team, may feed may feedback, may backup force kaagad. So sila yung mga quick reaction team, mga backup force. SOP 15 nena, the anti-prostitution or anti-vagrancy. Uh, anti-vagrancy, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, now is decriminalized. Dati pinagbabawal talaga yan. Alam niyo ba yung mga vagrancy? Yung, mga, yung vagrants na sinasabi? Yan yung mga walang trabaho pero tambay lang na palak, palakad-lakad sa public places. Mga vagrants. Kung baka kinakalat nila yung kanilang sarili. Wala namang trabaho. Noon, it is being punished. But nowadays, it was decriminalized yung vagrancy. Pero, Malamang pagka may municipal ordinance about uh, curfew, so yun yung binabayulit nila. Violation of the curfew. Itong anti-prostitution, uh, this is still a crime hanggang ngayon. Diba? So that is your SOP, Nena. This SOP sets forth the operational trust to be undertaken by the PNP that will be spearheaded by the fight against prostitution and vagrancy. SOP 16, anti-pornography. So, pwede, this can be connected with the child pornography. This prescribes the guidelines to be followed by the task PNP unit or offices in enforcing the ban on pornographic pictures, videos, and magazines. 
So, the anti-pornography. And SOP 17, Guidelines in the Conduct of Arrest, Search, and Seizure. So, this SOP prescribes the procedures and manner of conducting an arrest, conducting of an array, of array search, and or search of a person, search of any premises, and seizure of properties pursuant to the 1987 Philippine Constitution to the rules of court as amended and updated decision of the Supreme Court. So, what do we have to, un to keep in mind during the conduct of arrest? So, make sure, ladies and gentlemen, that during arrest, the law enforcer should identify himself or himself as police officers and state the nature of the arrest of the accused. So, kumbaga, Tigel, police ine, ay police kami. Diba? Ikaw ay hinuhuli sa kasong panggagahasa. O, diba? Tapos after that, they will apprehend the person and they will inform him of his Miranda rights. So, anong sasabihin? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say or do can be and will be used against you in the court of law. So, yan. Aside from that, sasabihin din, you have the right to remain. Ah, you have the right to remain. Yeah? You have the right to an independent counsel of your own choice. And if you cannot provide for yourself, the government will provide for you. So, saan manggagaling ngayon yun? Pagka hindi niya kayang maglabas, mag-sponsor o magbayad sa service ng private lawyer, the government will provide him and it will be coming from the public attorney's office. Yan. So, PAW, yung panggagaling. Yan yung mga, uh, yan, the government will provi provide a lawyer for him free of charge. It will be coming from the public attorney's office. Public attorney's office is also under the Department of Justice. Same is true with the court. Same is true with the appellate courts. Same is true with the trial courts. When you say trial courts, yan yung mga MTC, yan yung RTC. When we say uh, appeal courts, court of appeals. Diba? When we say review court, yan yung Supreme Court. So all of those are under the DOJ. Even the even the Bureau of Corrections is under the DOJ. And the National Bureau of Investigation is also under the DOJ, Department of Justice. Yung mga yan. Now, what is the difference in relation to Bucor pala? What is the difference of Bucor and the BGMP? In Bucor, ang binabatay ng Bucor, they, uh, they secure prisoners. And we know for a fact that prisoners are convicts, di ba? Already convicted upon trial. And so they were proven guilty. So yun yung mga binabantay ng Bucor. Unlike BGMP, they are binabad din ah they uh, they watch and protect inmates you say inmates these are per, uh, are respondents or accused undergoing trial but not yet proven guilty not yet convicted so yun yung inmate so that's the difference between u and the BJMP. So, yan, nasabi na natin yung uh, Miranda rights ng uh, one ng arrested person. Aside from that, yung pangatlong Miranda rights niya is you have the right to be informed of this right. So, yun yung pangatlo. Now, what is the effect if the law enforcer, let's say for example, failed, failed to inform the, what, the arrested person of his Miranda rights? Ano mayayari? It will lead to the technicality of the case. So, matitechnical yung kaso. Pag natechnical yung kaso, pwedeng ma-acquit yung perpetrator kahit na siya naman talaga yung gumawa. Pero dahil lang sa hindi natin siya nasabihin ng kanyang Miranda rights, napaamin, tapos sa kanilang lang mabawi, pwedeng matechnical. Bakit? Ano bang, ano bang mangyayari pagka even the police officers were able to gather evidence, illegally acquire evidence against 
the suspect or the accused. Ano bang nangyayari kasi? Diba? Ang sabi ng rules of court, meron tayong sinasabi na the poisonous tree doctrine. Any illegally acquired evidence cannot be used or is inadmissible in evidence. Kung baga yan. So yun, yung parang pinakabasehan kasi dyan. Para hindi ma-technical, syempre pagka na na inadmissible na yung evidence natin, wala tayong other evidence to prove his guilt, automatic. Ano mo yari? Pwede ma-dismiss yung kaso na final natin against the accused o pwede siyang ma-quit. With that, wala nang wala nang justice. Eh, meron pa naman siyang rights against double jeopardy. So, may susay, hindi natin siya pwedeng kasuhan ulit ng similar uh, offense for that one single act. We deceive na siya. Yung ganun. That's why we have to abide with this Uh, guidelines in the conduct of arrest, search, and seizure. Is OP okay number 18, the schematic diagram of Sandigan Master Plan, the anti-criminality master plan, Sandigan Milenio. Is OP okay 19 on illegal lagging. Is OP okay 20 on illegal fishing. And is OP okay 21 on anti-illegal drugs. I would just like to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that before RA 9165, We have RA 6425, di ba? 6425 yun. Yan. It is the law uh, on narcotics bago siya naging RA 9165. So, ilang oras na ba tayo nag-discuss? So, with that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, <laughs> we have to dismiss uh, I just hope you have taken down notes because uh, as usual, all of our discussion forms part of your quiz and later on of your exam. So our topic for next meeting will be the sample of police plans okay? and the PNP programs and strategies. That's all ladies and gentlemen and thank you. See you next meeting.